Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Angry Cast and Fallout Shelter 2022. How y'all doing? Uh, so, how'd you, what'd y'all think of that What If episode? Hmm, didn't think that was going to happen the way it did. Um, but it did. Kind of a, it, you know, it wasn't exactly what I thought was going to happen. But, uh, eh, I understand. I understand why, and I understand exactly what the intent was behind it. You can fix things, but it's going to cost you. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on here in the vault. We've got a lot of people going through training. We're still sitting at 101. I turned off the radio room for now. Uh, we will uh, take care of some people here. We've got some things going on. Um, yeah, but, 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 yeah, can you go? You can't go there. You can't go there at all. Uh, there is two. We're, 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 we're all, we're all, we're all full here. Uh, sorry. I think you can go there for now. And you can go there for now. Uh, and that's all I can do for the, for the moment with y'all. Um, but we got, uh, some, some quests out there we want to do. Um, we have, uh, Into Vault 333. The Paula Plumpkins saga. The only reason I'm doing this one is because I got some things I want to talk about, and also because we're going to get some uh, good stuff from it. So let's go do it. Also, we got two people on the way back in. So they're coming back. Uh, look, you funny guy in your outfit there. And you, Joseph, you've got that awesome thing on. They, they're at level 50. They're bringing a bunch of stuff back because we have a collect 210 weapons for a pet. That's the only reason why we're doing it. Um, I might send them out there, somebody out there, with Pip, which will get us times three. On the um, on how many things they can they can, you know that will count, and then we'll be good there. So let's uh, let's go ahead and do this uh, quest real quick, and we got some things to talk about too. So hold on. We explore Vault Three 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 into Vault Three Three Three. It's uh oh my God seriously this is all it is. Wow one room are you freaking kidding me? I'm gonna burn some. Aye. Hi! Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold it right there. I'm Overseer Patel. You just can't walk around here all willy-nilly. We've had a lot of trouble with raiders recently. Lately. Trust has to be earned. Alright, gladly. What can we do to help? Can you kill Frank the Tank? <laughs> oh my god. He raids us all the time. It's... Sure. Alright, well. We got a pet for that. I mean, I'll take it. That's fine. Whatever. It's a five minute away thing. They'll be like, they'll be back in two seconds. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, that was kind of, I forgot. I mean, it's been so long since I did these quests that I forgot all about that shit. My goodness. How about it? What's what's going to be? Two, it was five minutes away. Now it's going to be what? Three minutes away? All right. We're not going to waste it on that. We'll just take some time out. They're back. <laughs> we'll collect those things. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give you Pip for now. Because I want you to go out there and and do your thing, um, and collect stuff with us. So okay, we we got some choices here. Of what we want to do? Uh, the daily quest was. Uh, we still haven't done spider raiders. I don't have enough raider outfits to do that. I'm thinking I'm gonna do. Let's uh, let's do this one because I can. I'm gonna burn some. Um. I'm going to burn. Watch McCall to get there. Okay. Let's go. We'll start it now. <laughs> we'll start it now. <laughs> Hopefully it gives them everything. Alrighty. Okay. Tank busting. Frank the Tank. Remember old school? Uh, speaking of old school... Watched a a new started a new series <clears throat> based off of some recommendations I got from some people. It's an old show started about I think 2017, 2017. Oh, what the hell? What what the hell? Come on, 2017. It's called Dark. That's it. Dark. It's on Netflix. If you have Netflix, uh, it's uh, a, a a show. It's a German show. And I highly recommend if you're going to watch it, if you're any kind of like really real, if you really enjoy this kind of stuff, put on the German audio with the English subtitles if you don't know German. Uh, don't put on the, the, the English dub because it's horrible. In fact, oddly enough, the one guy sounds like Farkas, but I know it's not him. 
Um, but it's and I've only I'm only like into the first season. There's three seasons, and it's uh, it involves time travel and all kinds of trippy shit. Which you know I could I could we could do an entire thing on time travel if we wanted to, and uh, and how you know the implications and all that stuff. But it's a show set in this town where everybody all these families are intertwined with each other, and it's horrible. It's, and there's a nuclear excuse me nuclear power plant there, and the the main families and I, I don't want to screw up the names or anything like that, but you've got the um, you've got a, a family who's a cop, and he has three children, uh, a boy, an old eldest boy, a middle girl, and a young boy named Mads, or I'm sorry, no, named Mickle. He had a brother named Mads that disappeared 33 years ago, and that becomes important. Um, there's another family, and it, it all starts out with like one family having, um, you know, just their their entire world getting taken, you know, blown up. Um, but and that uh, guy's name's Jonas. The kid's name's Jonas, and his, uh, his, you know, his dad's no longer in the picture, and his mom's having a, you know, having an affair, and he just like he spent two, you know, months away, and now he's back. Um, and <clears throat> there's a third family um, that run the nuclear power plant and a hotel. Uh, and then there's a fourth family that, um, like I said, I don't want to give too much away. But anyways, th- all you need to know is there's four families that, you know, that are intertwined with each other and, and, and just their entire lives are all f- screwed up. Um, and there's a mysterious thing happening. Birds are dying. They're falling out of the sky. And something they think is going on with a nuclear power plant, and uh, you know, children, people are going, you know, mis- they're disappearing. Like there's a, a teenager that disappeared, and we don't know what happened to him. Um, and then after that, you know, more things happen. But there's this cave on the edge of town by the nuclear power plant that something's weird with it. You know, and they, they, they nobody's supposed to go in it. And there's some f- funky stuff happening there. And, <laughs> like I said, I'm trying to be very careful because I don't want to give anything away. It's, it's, it takes a lot. There's a lot going on, and it, you have to pay attention. And by knowing any little thing, you could ruin the experience. And I don't want to ruin it. But it involves time travel between uh, 2019, 2000, uh, 1986, and 1953. And it all centers around the cave. And there's some trippy-ass shit that happens. If you watch the Umbrella Academy, you know about the time travel thing and the whole grandfather paradox and all that stuff. That plays into, that plays into you know, effect here in, in a sense. And it's just like once you once you start to realize some things, and it'll become, if you have any idea of, of names and linguistics and all that stuff, you're going to figure something out real early on that I kind of did. Uh, that, you know, it was like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. How the hell did that, you know? How did that happen? When did that take place? Oh, you know, how did I miss that? So, that's, you know, watch the show. Go watch the show. It's three three seasons long. It's not that long. Uh, you know, they're like 10 episodes. It's 30 episodes. I'm Brent the Tank and I'm gunning for you fools. Huh? It's, it doesn't take that much to get through them. But they're kind of heavy. But they're also like real creepy too because the show itself is dark. It's it's it. Most of it takes place in like wooded areas, and there's like the lighting is low, and the, the music is so freaking creepy, and it really, really, really sets the mood. It's got a lot of like, um, I'm gonna try to think of what what it compared it to. It's got a lot of like a, a um. There's a show back when I was a kid called um, Children of the Stone. It was a British show. It was a half an hour, you know, weekly. It was it was on a thing called Nickelodeon did called the Third Eye, and it was about this, you know, weird town in like Britain, where this, uh, you know, in the countryside it was like almost like Stonehenge, but there's like weird things happening and and, and a cult and all the other things you know going on, and it kind of like all plays into this as well, um, kind of a little bit like Lost in a sense, uh, with with some of the stuff that's happening, especially with the nuclear power plant, but I really recommend watching it and not getting spoiled from me because the show itself is is very very bleak and and very dark and just it's a down i mean like there's a i mean we're talking like there's you know drug use suicide um just you know missing children 
all heavy themes, all heavy themes, and we we talk about like Stranger Things, with um, you know the, the missing children growing up, or like you know Barb and Mike and or, and uh, Will Byers and all that stuff. But like this is like real life. This is there's, it's not supernatural in a sense. I mean, it is kind of sci-fi, but it's very 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 dark. Like if you watch Looper or Twelve Monkeys, those are you know if you like Tw- Looper or Twelve Monkeys, this is a show for you. So. Okay, that was quick, and I kind of feel like I didn't really explain anything about the show, but I, like I said, there's so much that I don't want to give away. But it is really awesome to watch. So, okay, let's head back to the vault, because we're done with that. Return to the vault. We got four. We're, 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 we're netting three if we don't go back in. I think we are. I think we'll be fine. We're going to we're gonna just come back. We're going to do two. We're going to do two. So... Uh, okay, let's, uh, I, I need to collect the gun, so let's get rid of these things here. And that, you know, I'll get 12 out of that. Alright. And y'all, what do we got in the way of, okay, we're, we're full up again. Awesome. Uh, return to Vault 333. Uh, I'm not going to do that one for right now because that's just going to be like a, a in and out and it's going to waste my, my stuff. We, we won't do that one on camera, but I will do this one because this, this will get us two. All right, let's take you, take you, take you, and we're good to go. And we're going to start it. We're going to burn five. I got 78. What do I care? I'm not going to use them for anything. <sighs> yeah. Is it going to actually work this time or is it going to put me back into the vault? Okay, good. Search for Racky Jobinson's baseball jersey. Um, so let's 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 kind of like ease into it and try not to spoil it anything. The show starts out with the death of someone, and then it goes. Actually, you know what? Now scrap that. We're not going to talk about that. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it. Um, let's talk Stranger Things. <laughs> yeah. So do y'all watch? Did y'all watch? Did y'all watch the, the the volume two? Oh my gosh. Seriously. Wow. And the Emmys came out yesterday, and, uh, you know, Sadie Sink and uh, Millie Bobby Brown snubbed for Emmys, which, you know, two fingers in the middle in the, you know, two middle fingers up to that, because they deserved it. It was awesome. Um, Stranger Things has, has, since 2016, has been a pop culture phenomenon. Um... And really, 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 uh, you know, has been a, a, every year has been great. Every season has been great. Now, people will say that, like, the, you know, the second season was a little bit nye. People will say this season was a little bit nye. I, I, I mean, I get it. Like, a lot of things, they, they stretched those last two episodes into, like, three hours long or whatever. And it was like, my gosh. I started, I wanted to do it Friday night that it came out the, the 1st of July because I didn't want to get spoiled. And I didn't realize it was going to be up most half the night uh, watching it. But there were so many um, influences from, from my childhood. And that's been like the whole thing with, with uh, Stranger Things since, you know, season one. Um, we talked, re- you know, just, just the last, you know, segment about missing children growing up. Now, y'all don't, if y'all walk into a, a Walmart, you'll see a thing on the, on the wall that says Code, Code Adam. I, that's what I believe is in reference to Adam Walsh. Um, he was a boy. He was the son of John Walsh, the you know the um, America's Most Wanted guy. And in the na- in the early '80s, he went missing, and he was abducted, and he was killed, and later found. And there was a TV movie about it later on with Daniel J. Trevante of Hill Street Blues fame as John Walsh. And I watched it as a kid, and it was the scariest thing to me because. I kept wanting him to be alive. I kept wanting him to be found alive. And when he wasn't, it, it really hit home. Because growing up, that was like three things that we were the biggest fears of a child in growing up in the 80s was, well, you know, a child with privilege, I should say, <laughs> in the 80s was, one, getting abducted by somebody, uh, you know, in a, in a truck or a van. Uh, two, quicksand. Um, we thought it was going to be a bigger thing than it actually was. And three, bottomless pits. Um yeah, I don't know. Bottomless pits. I don't know why. I felt like the bottomless pit was a big thing. It was going to happen. I was going to fall into one and just keep falling forever. I, yeah, don't ask me why. But 
kids, you know, going missing, that was a thing. And and Will Byers in season one going missing, that was a thing. You know, that, that spoke right to the 80s. But it also had, like, that feel of, of E.T. because they were, you know, playing... Because uh, Eleven shows up. Eleven shows up, and Eleven is, is you know, like this... this The whole thing of, of introducing Eleven and the, the uh, learning from the TV and, and, and showing... These are my action figures. That, that was so E.T. And then you have... Um, it's all a Stephen King novel, basically. You know, with the way it's framed, the way everything happens in, in, in season one, it was all Stephen King. That was basically a Stephen King thing. And it was awesome! And you had Firestarter with, you know, Eleven, and It, and Cujo, and, you know, that was season two, kind of. But then, you know, season two was, let's go to the arcade. Now, you know, in the, in the early 80s, we had arcades, and it was a big cool thing. You know, we all went, you know, stole our quarters and went and did that. And, and playing D&D, and all that. And, and, and now Will's back, and Will has to integrate back into society, kind of. And it's like everything calls him Zombie Kid. There's a little bit of a, you know, weird things happening there. And the Mind Flare, and it's, again, D&D. And you have um, Eleven going off and doing her thing, which I guess if you're going to watch season two, and you wanted to skip one episode out of the entire thing to get through it quicker, it would be Lost Sister, the other sister, or the Lost Sister, or whatever. The one that's involves Eleven when she's in Pittsburgh. Because there, there, I mean, other than the fact that it shows her how to get her Dagobah moment, where she has, you know, gets trained on how to, she can, instead of lifting up an X-Wing out of the swamp, she lifts a, a train car. Uh, there was really no point to it otherwise, and it was kind of a waste. But the whole, you know, Max and and, and, and Billy, and that and that was such a great addition to the cast. Uh, you know, Max and Billy, and there was a lot of, like, over, really, not almost overt themes of, uh, kind of like, you know, racism, which calls back to it and how they handled Mike Hanlon, uh, you know, growing up. But it was the 80s. So, you know, that's where that all f fell into. And then you had season three, which was all, we all go to the mall. And it's the bright colors, and it's the, it's the late 80s, and it's all the music and everything. And, and um, we <laughs> the, the wonderful duet of, of uh, you know, the, the never-ending story at the end. But the Russians and, and the, the influence of Rocky IV and the influence of, of, of um, you know, Red Dawn and all that stuff with the, you know, the Cold War. Definitely, definitely a big thing big thing from you know the late 80s but it was all that over the top you know die hard ish kind of like idea of of um you know in fact there was a direct call out to die hard where he says you won't shoot me you're a policeman policemen have rules definitely a call right to uh, a die hard with that and then season four, like season, like I said, the, the whole point of, of, of the late '80s was season three and over the top and, 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 and outlandish plots of that make no reasonable sense. And the comedy, the over the top comedy with Murray and 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 uh, Nancy, like the moonlighting esque kind of like you know banter back and forth between Nancy, uh, not Nancy, um, Joyce and Hopper. And then season four, of course, was uh, was you know the most awesomest thing ever. And we'll get talk about that in a second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go three, because I want to get through season four. <laughs> but I don't want to spoil it for you. We don't want to spoil it, because, you know, we know what it's like. <sighs> We're blowing it all. We're blowing it all. All right, let's, uh, we can collect some stuff here, but we're not going to, because we don't want that stuff. We don't care about that stuff. We'll collect everything else. Y'all don't have much, do you? We don't, uh... Do we... Oh, we still good there. Okay. We still good. Alright. Um, let's, uh... Let's do one more. And... Oh, we'll go get... Yes, we'll go get a, another pet. And we're gonna open up all that shit today, because I think I got tons of stuff. Whoop! No, no, not you! Not you! Not you! Not you! No, back, back, back! Buck, 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 buck! Uh, dwellers... There you go. I left them without their shit. Oh, well. That's fine. Alright, start now. Six. We're going to blow through a lot of this shit, but we got a ton of it. Let's go Let's go do it. We're only at 17 minutes. I'm not too worried about this shit. Alright. Season four. Season four. We all knew that kid in high school. At least I did. That was Eddie Munson. Season four is about Eddie Munson. It really is. We think it's about Eleven getting her powers back. 
we think it's about um, and, 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 and to an essence, the two main characters of season four were Max and Eddie Munson, and both of them have baggage. Let's start off with uh, let's start off with Max. Max, she feels responsible. She feels guilt over Billy's death. Um, he terrorized her. He didn't. He didn't love her. You know. He abused her in season two, and you know, in season three. And said, but it, it was not him really. It was the mind flare. Um, but his death. And she carries that guilt, that survivor's guilt with it all. And it's a horrible thing. It's a horrible thing, survivor guilt. And it, it's not necessary. But she feels it and, it, and it creates a doorway for um, Vecna, as they call it, to get in. And we really find out, like I said, I do not want to spoil it. Go watch season four if you watch it. Vecna is the end game for everything. Just to let you know. Because there's only one more season after this. But Vecna uses your guilt and your traumas to create opportunities. That's definitely a writer's motif right there. Um, but Max has that. And Max feels helpless to that. But Max has power. And it's, a to it's, the, it's the Iron Eagle you know, moment of, of using music and with the Walkman and all that, and that's awesome. And you know that we had Kate Bush and running up that hill, um, and women, you know, the empowerment of, of women and all this thing. And, and you know, it's really Max's story through a bulk of the season, except for the very beginning and the end, um, to an to an to an extent. To up until the up until like the last twenty minutes, it's up. It's it's about Max, uh, you know, from you know mid early into the season until like almost about 20 minutes before the end it's all about max and i cannot say i was expecting what happened to have happened i don't know what that means for max as a as a character uh going forward i certainly was not you know and and i feel cheapened in a little bit because of all of that however i will allow it because i'm not the one who wrote it oh dear Glad I held off on using none of those uh, critical hits. Um, but I'm not, you know, I'm not the one who wrote it. It's not my characters. I suggest if I have a real big, huge thing with it, I should probably go off and rock my own stuff and let, you know, do my own thing with my own characters. Whatever. But it seems kind of cheap in a, in, a, in a sense, and, and that's all I will say about that. Um, because. Either you give someone that moment, or you don't. But you don't go halfway on it. <laughs> but they did it. Uh, they had their cake and they ate it too. Is what I'm going to tell you. They had their cake and they ate it too. Max was the hit. everything hinged on Max, and in, at the same time, they got away with it, in a sense. Like the, you know, <laughs> and that's one of the things we always find with shows like this is that we ha we have a lack of investment because we don't we know that the main characters are going to be the main characters there are very few shows that treat you know and uh, game of thrones is one of them <laughs> uh yeah so anyways all right now eddie munson eddie munson i grew up in the 80s i grew up at this time i was mike i was will i was dustin growing up and when i got to high school i was those guys and we had Eddie Munson's in the school. The, the I, I there was a friend of mine who you know, rest in peace. He was Eddie Munson. He had a very very rough life, and he was looked at a certain way, and he was not given um, you know the 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 judgment and the benefit of the doubt. That he should have been had gotten, and he didn't. And but, but he was a good person inside, and deep down he was a good person. But nobody chose to find out who he was. You know, everybody just assumed uh, he was a certain type, which everybody did with Eddie Munson. And there's actually a really good article that I kind of disagree with 
on, on you know about Eddie Munson and that the height of the 80s of the satanic panic with everybody and and D and D. Um, that town turned on Eddie with no proof. And granted, Eddie would, you know, no, there would be no way for Eddie to not have to deal with a court of law and probably not, <laughs> there would have been, until, unless you actually, you know, show every single person in town uh, what's actually happening, which nobody ever tells anybody about. They just, like, you know, like, there's stuff going on that you don't know about. That Eddie was never going to, to be a free man. He was never going to be a free man in, in that world because they didn't set it up that way. But the satanic panic was a real thing. But that was so weird. And it's like the whole idea that kids were never around their parents. The parents had no idea what's going on. There was a lot of shit happening in this. Like, that nobody knew what was going on in it. Like, where were the police? Where was the rest of the police? Where were the state police in Indiana when Hawkins Mall was under siege in, in, in Season 3? You know what I mean? Like, there was, like, a, a lack of, of, of awareness of what's happening. Almost like the It, you know, the, the, the Dairy Curse, where the, everybody just, the fog, you know, they nobody knows what's going on. They just ignore it. But Eddie was a good person. I mean, he, yeah, he, okay, did he do drugs? Yeah, okay, fine, he did drugs. But, you know, a lot of people did drugs, and it doesn't make them a bad person. They may make bad choices in life, or they may have, you know, some vices, but that doesn't make them a horrible person. It's that what they do with that information. Woohoo! So, you know. And Eddie and, and Dustin had that, you know, he, Steve was Dustin's idol the first three seasons, and it was because Dustin needed something to mold him. Now, granted, you know, there's always like, you know, don't ever take the advice of the, because they're going to give you bad advice. But at a certain point, Dustin, you know, got the girl. So Steve's tutelage to him was no longer needed. But now he needed to find that inner, you know, something about him um, that Eddie had. And Eddie, Eddie, was a mentor, and Eddie, you know, get, Eddie gave that to him, and and just watching the entire and, and the relationship between the two of them, and my God, when he said Dustin, you know, Anderson never changed, I was like, I lost, I was like, Arr. but let's talk for you know the last brief thing. Like I said, I don't want to spoil anything because there's so much, and Lucas, oh my God, the, the whole ending with Lucas, the, everything was great, and Erica, gotta love Erica, kicking ass and taking names, Erica, um, but Eddie's. <laughs> had anything had any other show done this in 2022 set in 2022 with and we're going to say it's the master of puppets okay we're going we're gonna to just say it's the master of puppets had anybody actually done that in 2022 without irony it would have been what a hell of they like they've jumped the shark they've gone you know but but in the context of the 80s in the context of the show and in the context of, of stranger things as a whole that worked and i applauded it and i was like i threw my hands up in the air and i was like this is flipping awesome oh my god because i was that kid i sat out on on a balcony of a, of a hotel or a condo in, in 1988 with my my friend and we sat there at night at the beach just sat out there and watched the world go by and listened to Master of Puppets, like this, the, the album. And it was just, you know, that was a thing. You know, we, we were just, you know, oh my god, this is awesome! This was, this was our hell, you know, life growing up, so I, I really identified with all that, and I loved it. But that's Stranger Things Season 4. Go see it. Also, check the description. Uh, check the description of this video, please, if you like Stranger Things. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. Alright, let's go back. We're gonna let them wander back in. And actually, no, we're not because they got some stuff we want to we want to have. Uh, we want to open up. Yeah, we're almost at the thirty minute mark. This is a long one. Wow, I, I feel like this is. I was really reaching on this one. I needed to do it though. Okay, yeah. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Oh, don't care. Get rid of you. Get rid of you. Get rid of you. All right. Yeah. Where are we at now? 92 of 219. Well, okay, fine. Alrighty. Let's get you out on another quest. For that, we're going to have to go make up some of our stuff. 
and we will do. How am I not? I thought I want. Why are they not healed? I thought I've been doing that. Okay, whatever. Uh, go do your thing. Cause I'm not taking them out for kicking people out for a while. Alrighty then. Okay, so that's gonna you know be all for the quests we got going on. Uh, oh my, wait, where, where do you need to go? You need to go somewhere. You need to go to E. I don't have any place for you in E, but we'll send you to I. Uh, or not. Um. Okay, we have room for just one more, I think. Yeah, there's five in there now. Okay. Alrighty, let's uh, let's do this. Let's open up all these damn uh, things. Oh, that's right. We got a Mr. Handy from a while ago. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that. We did it. We we did that one quest. We got a Mr. Handy. All right. Uh, let's see what else we got. We've got okay. Oh, I don't know. I what is night armor, caps, stem pack, and enhanced fat man. Awesome. That's flipping awesome. Cool. Uh, yeah, we don't care about that. Don't care about that. What else we get? Good stuff. We got to go watch. Power as shotgun. We're gonna get rid of half of the stuff as it is. All right, we got the caps. We got the right away. We got a trifle fly. We got a lot of good, good junk. But advanced radiation suit. Nee, don't care about that. We got and right away and caps and trifle flag. Go 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 gun. Uh, oh snap! Look at that shit. Awesome, Mark. Four power armor. Kick ass. Oh, baby. That's awesome. Merc gear. Nye. Duct tape. Nye. Uh, caps. Nye. Uh, right away. Nye. Uh, sturdy wasteland gear. Oh, that was kind of... We got three pets. What did we get? Oh, I hope we got some good stuff. Black cat! Black cat, it is... A shadow. 94% health. Awesome! That was a legendary one, wasn't it? Oh, you, my friend. Were you training? Oh, well, Rosie, 59% health. Well, that's pretty damn good. We'll, put the, we'll, we'll do something with that. Uh-oh, I don't recognize you. You're another legendary. Luna, nice, 61% wasteland junk. Awesome. So there you go. That was some good shit we got out of all that. And we got to put you somewhere, my friend. How are we doing on that? We will, uh, we, you, you got, uh... How are we doing on everything else here? Six, six, six. You have five. Okay, you can go right over here, and then we're good there. Okay, we'll do everything on our own, and we'll get it done. We'll see you next time. Uh, again, hey, uh, if you want to see more what if, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta let me know. Um, apparently, some people liked it. That's great, but I don't know what else I can do. I don't know where else I can go. We, now that we've done that. Give me some ideas, suggestions on what to do for what if, and and show me some love. Uh, it's this, you know, we have to have something to make it happen because it is a big, it is a big effort for me to get that done, and I don't have the time to do it. Uh, I would make the time if I knew. So let me know in the comments on this video or the other or, or the what if video that was on last week. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Have a good one. Mm, bye bye.